Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Black Culture Matters podcast brought to you by Catch for Drip. I am Gat Wade, founder of Skinny Skin, the little lip balm on a mission. You can learn more at skinnyskin.com. And here with me is Bishop Omar Jawar, the founder and CEO of Urban Specialists. Hey, Bishop. Hello. Uh, this Black Culture Matters podcast. Hey, Bishop. This Black Culture Matters podcast is brought to you by Catch for Drip uh, with Magad and Bishop Omar, which, which is a, a video show that we host together, um, where we invite some of the most influential cultural icons of our time um, to give them a chance to inspire our young Black listeners, um, to inspire them to live you know, to lead healthy, happy, productive lives by giving them some really great tips um, and also some uh, insights as to how they succeeded themselves. So you can find us on all social media platforms uh, with the handle at Catch the Drip TV. Bishop, oh, Bishop, you have no idea what you signed up for today. Oh my God, Bishop, I have been, I've been so outraged. I don't even think that I have a screaming bone in me anymore. My poor husband could tell you that he's just, he's had an earful. <laughs> so let's just go right into it. Have you, have you been hearing about this stuff about um, the Smithsonian? You know the Smithsonian? Have you heard about it? Tell me about it. I've heard, I've heard a little bit, but give me your, give me your spin. All right. So the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, you know, um, it's in, uh, in D.C. And so they came up yesterday with a poster and the poster is on uh, here. Let me bring it up for you. The poster is on aspects and assumptions of whiteness and white culture in the United States. <laughs> So, Bishop, they are saying that any of the following, they have a list on this okay. poster. Okay. Um, and maybe for, those of, for people who are following us on video, we're going to make sure to have this up on the video. But okay, so they have this, um, this list of uh, cultural traits and ways of philosophies of living that they think is strictly white, strictly white, meaning that black people can't be it. And, I'm sh and I know this was put on as in whites on one end versus blacks on the other. I know this is not talking about Asians. I know this is not talking about people like that. It is, this is about whites versus blacks. So Bishop, are you ready? So I can walk uh -huh. you through this list? This nonsense? Okay. So they say that to be white oh. is, to be a, is based on rugged individualism. What they mean by that is, is to have this belief system where the individual is the primary unit, where this individual believes in self-reliance, where independence and autonomy are highly valued and rewarded, where individuals assumed to be in control of their environment, they are assumed to be in control of their environment, you get what you deserve. That is to be white, and the opposite would be to be black. Bishop, where do I start with this? Where do we go? Where, where, where? You, uh, let me do, you okay. What do you me, think? Now. I mean, you can see why I have been just like, I mean, and there's much more nonsense. Just keep going. Don't keep going? Go ahead. No, you go. Well, we're going to do one-on-one. -on -one. Or do you want me just to tell you about all of them? Just, just give me one thing about this, because I've got so much more to say. Just, okay. just this one. Let me, let me tell you. You remember on our last deal, I told you I used to train um, on the social ideas, the social fabric of individuals and groups. And I used to train yeah. on that. I used to train on that. At the state, I would train on the reason that our we, we adapt to words like brother and sister and mama and this and that is because we have a proclivity to have a family 
uh, styled interaction. That's why you call it, yeah, what's, that's, that's my sister, that's my brother, oh, that's my dear. Maybe, Bishop, before you go there, but let me read the second one because I was not going to do it that way, but because you're going this direction, and actually I think the two are together, because people have a misconception of, of like when they see us being so much about fear, let me read the second one, and then, sorry, we'll go back to you, because uh, this is going to say something. Uh, Bishop, you might want to put your phone on uh, something, but, um, okay, so the second one. The family structure in white people and take everything I'm going to say to that it should be the opposite for black people. Mm -hmm. So the family structure, the nuclear family in white people is the father, the mother, and 2.3 children is the ideal social unit. Uh, in the white family structure, husband is the breadwinner and head of household. In the family structure of a white person, wife is a homemaker and subordinate to the husband. And the white family structure, children should have own rooms and be independent. I don't know for you, Bishop, but I know a lot of um, white families where that is not really... The, I, 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 I mean, I don't know what these people are talking about. This idea that the wife is a homemaker, I don't know, I don't care in which skin color group you're talking about. This is freaking 2020. And last time I checked, women are everywhere out working doing things. Give me a break. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, let's unpack that. That is, that's, that's interesting. Okay. First of all, wh where, where are they getting this idea? You know, is this a study? Is this some type of, you know, I, I don't know where they're coming up with the, with the base da data to say that this is true. Because if it's at the museum, they are saying this is true. It's not this is what they are saying is a norm or something that they have been proven through data, right? This is not like some guy's independent analysis, right? Right. Okay. So, see, the, the I'm going to say it like this, because this is deep. The only way to have a true view of a group is not to just study the outcomes of the group, but it's to study the process by which those outcomes came to be. So if you look at the outcomes of the African-American experience now, you would say, well, you know, it's more babies that's born without fathers, it's more fathers. So, you, so those outcomes could justify those kinds of ideas, but you can't do that without having a, a holistic look. And to stop at where you are and not really get into why, how, how did you get there is, 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 is a total, is very biased. I'm just going to say it like that. I don't want to be that ugly. It's a bias. You're the nice one. I'm not. I'm the nice one. Yeah, it is. I'm it is calling this biased. whole thing racist. Just so you know, yeah. you're being like, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is active racism right here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm saying it's biased, but you're right. Now, now so, but, but let's go back. But that idea of rugged individualism, pull yourself out by your own bootstraps, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, right. I used to talk about that as a European concept more so than an African-based concept. And Asian, you know, we talk about Asian. We, we, we would go, I used to do this training. Uh, myself and his, uh, my brother, Amon Rashid, we used to do this, this particular training. Uh, and so it was um, seen in the eyes of people when we were doing it as an explanation of our cultural norms and language and all of that. But it was definitely not seen as some type of reason why we are in this condition that's subpar. That says to me, that just reading what you were reading to me, says I am explaining why you are lesser, not why you are different. And yeah. that's a big problem. Go, go, go ahead. That's, I a lot that's, more a big and that's a big problem. And you can see why I say then it is actively being racist if that's the construct from where it's coming from. You're showing me all the reasons why I am actually, I have actually become lesser. And, but now you want to normalize it. You want to tell me that, anyway. Next, to, 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 to have an emphasis, I don't know who's doing that sound, Bishop. Is that you or me? 
That's not that's not my phone. I think that's the computer, but it's not my phone because my phone is off. So it has to be my. It may be my. Let me see. It may be my computer saying to me that Maggette is tripping today. Might be. I don't know. <laughs> my computer may be giving me a warning. It's going to be a long one today. Go ahead. I'm, I'm tripping. I've been tripping. I've been tripping. You can get it. I've been tripping, and I'll tell you at the end what I'm about to. Okay, go ahead. I'm about to do something pretty crazy. Okay. Right, so be- next. An emphasis to, to put an emphasis on the scientific method is to be white. Meaning, mm. if, you want to be, if you listen to me, if you want to be objective and have rational linear thinking, you're being white. Mm. If cause and if, if you, if you, if you put an, uh, a, um, you know, if you have a cause and effect relationship, you see the relationship between cause and effect, you're being white. If you are into quantitative emphasis, you're being white. Go for that, Bishop. You, you go because me at this point, I'm just oh like, I told God. you. That cannot be a real study, man. That, 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 this has to be yeah. some type of falsehood. That can't be real. That cannot be real. If that's real, that's crazy. But anyway, all right, let, let's, let's go. Is, is a, oh, my museum. God. And it's at the museum, Bishop. It's at the museum. So next, 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 next. That okay. History. 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 Uh, based on northern European immigrants' experience in the United States, so the history of white people is based on the northern European immigrants' experience in the United States. Um, and we're gonna, you and I, we can, we can see where we agree maybe with this or not, but okay. Heavy focus on the British Empire and the primacy of Western, as in Greek and Roman, and Judeo-Christian tradition. So if you have any of that stuff, it means you're, this is white supremacy. So Bishop, I'm ta- let's take the primacy of Western Greek, Roman and Judeo-Christian foundation tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, go, go, go here for it. I mean, some of it maybe, maybe, you know, to me, okay. Like you're gonna talk about the, Nor- the history is based on the Northern European immigrants. Well, um, it is true that those people came here to immigrate right? It is also true that they brought, um, you know, some of our ancestors here, and I say our ancestors, because it is not because I'm African immigrant and you're an African American that we don't share the same ancestors, <laughs> you know? The person who is your ancestor is probably was my same ancestor, you know? I'm sure that, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, where did they come from, right? So in any case, um, yes. So what, what's your point on this history? Like the fact that, you know, they're saying that the historical reference point is, is all of that. That's yeah. one place where I might have a little bit of agreement with them. But anyway, go ahead. See, the, the idea of conquering land, and it was, you know, you know saying immigration, it's different, Im- immigration and intimidation and, and discovery and taking. I mean, it's different. You know, I, you know, I go in the back of your house and I said, I just discovered your car. I mean, I didn't discover it, I stole it, you know. <laughs> uh, but, I'm going to shoot you, Bishop. I'm just <laughs> I think you would. But Better be the careful. Point, the point I'm making is that this idea that this was some type of uh, uh, conquering expedition from the British Empire and the, and the, and the Roman Greek kind of idea and Judeo-Christian freedom of religion, that all of that stuff has has validity to me. It's not, it's not, not valid, but, but, but watch this. How can you ask the captured, what do you see when you look at the one who is capturing, the one who is, put, so, so saying that that is the historical vantage point by which someone else looked at it, that's okay. But think about those who were in chains and in bondages and in the middle passage and in those slave ships. Our minds was not talking about immigration and northern and we were talking none of that. We were saying survival. We were saying separation. We that it was a whole different understanding. So the tradition, I think, has to be seen from each one's eyes, not again, not just each one's outcome. That's what I'm hearing with this. The outcome is we would, we spread the Greco, you know, the uh, Greco Roman idea of this, and we were British Empire, and we Judeo Christian. That may have been the result, but you cannot ask. You got to ask me what was the result from my viewpoint, so that we can have a true discussion about in the middle, because history is fact and interpretation. 
And I'm trying, and so I'm trying to listen at what's the interpretation. And if the interpretation is the flip side, uh, I don't think that that's very credible because you cannot say the yeah. flip side of that statement is that means that we have no respect for the British Empire. We don't have any understanding of uh, Judeo Christian values because we're more Christian than anybody. You know, so some of that I think has this kind of, um, I, I don't know if they can really put a straight line and say, you on that side and you on that side. I don't think that that's, you can do that with some of these things. But again, I think it, it keeps looking from the outcome because the truth was the ones who were coming to America were not coming just as immigrants. And these, these were the initial ones were criminals, were folks who were rebellious, folks who were yeah. trying to figure something out. And, and, and then, yeah. and then there was a whole lot of, um, whole lot of stuff that I don't going to get to yet, but, yeah, yeah, we get oh, it. But you, 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 thank you. Um, next, the Protestant work ethic um, is another aspect of being white. As in, hard work, the white people believe that hard work is the key to success. That's white supremacy. Work before you play, that idea is white supremacy. If you didn't meet your goals, you didn't work hard enough. That's what white supremacy. So on that last one, if you didn't meet your goals, you didn't work hard enough. I will never sit there and say that that way of thinking is, white, is specific to whites only. That to me is still, it's rubbish. But even if you took that sentence in, um, in isolation and applied it to just human beings in general, I would tend to say that I don't agree with that one um, I don't like that one to apply to any human being. If you didn't meet your goals, you didn't work hard enough. No, um, I would agree more with that idea. If you, maybe if you didn't meet your goals, you didn't work uh, smart enough maybe, but that one, fine, but I don't want to give it just to white people or black people. To me, again, I have a fundamental issue with something being primarily white or something being primarily black, besides maybe the, your skin color. So, but when they say work, hard work is the key to success, that only white people believe that that only white people believe that you need to work before you play. What does it make us, Bishop? What the heck does it make us? So exactly on what do black people believe that their success comes from? I mean, I, I wanna ask you that because this is really could drive me nuts. And also the fact that we have to, it's not okay to work before we play. So what does it mean? Does it mean that we're always out there jerking around and fooling around? Is that what to be black is? When I'm reading this, and compare, by the way, they say it's Protestant work ethic. I say liar, liar. It is not just Protestant work ethic. Remember when I told you that as a Sufi murid from Senegal, our mantra in life is work as if you will never die and pray as if you will die tomorrow? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, you know, you, you, um, you're hitting it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. That, that, um, Unfortunately, that has become too normal. Sorry, it's my other thank you beeping saying that's my thermometer when you get real get mad. But man, I'm gonna tell you something. These guys, this I don't, again, I don't know the study because you, you you haven't told me who the source is. But I'm just going. I'm just going. This is based on studies. This is this is people who came together. Remember that D'Angelo crazy woman with the white fragility thing? Well, right. they use her. And her thing, it's this exhibit. This is an exhibit. So this is something that somebody made up. But let me tell you, I'm coming for them. Just go on. Okay, good. Glad, glad that I know it's crazy people who put it together. Good. So I don't feel bad. All right, look. So <laughs> to say <laughs> that, that, that the whole idea of hard work and that is such a, um, that, that, that is such an absence of understanding of what it is to work without expectation of getting ahead. So work without expectation of knowing what's to come or what, you know, it, it's almost like um, a person who says, I'm in school never to graduate. And your mind becomes so, so captured in either the dream of getting out of it or the nightmare of staying in it that it causes you to work, but your work does not reflect. Like, remember the time when I said, hey, you've been working hard. You said, I love what I do so much that I don't feel like work. So it feels, yeah. like, it feels like life to me. 
Well, yeah, yeah, if you run in a company and run into this and trying to explore, and it, yeah, they'll feel like, oh, your hard work pays off. Like, you're right, Coach. <laughs> but if you are, if you are in that place when it's really about principled entrepreneurship, it's really about principle-based life and principle-based um, ideas as it relates to how you work and what you do, there's a, that's a whole different concept, especially if it's entrepreneurial, if it's about your spirit, about your gift, about your ideas, about your contribution, about your legacy, about your lineage, about this. You can be motivated, you work very hard. And so you won't have to use play as your way of compensating for what you're not getting through this power of work. See, so you start saying to yourself, man, I'm not even, I'm not getting my fair share. So I, I have to leave. I got, I got to kind of live, I got to live as if I'm under this cloud of uncertainty, but I got to act certain in it. And so I'm sure it's going to say that then would say, that's why they love church and this and this God stuff and because they, because they can't produce on their own, which again is such a fundamental wrong idea on so many levels that is, that is laughable. And, and then the other thing is this. Um, this is less about race to me and more about um, protectionism, classism, and the, the person who believes for some reason, and they, and they off, obviously, that some people deserve to be marginalized. It's like, you know, that's, you know, you don't, you don't suppose to have this other level. And I love it when you break those barriers because, you know, you can say that about women, you can say that about blacks, you can say that about whomever. It is this idea that marginalization is part of capitalism, that we have to capitalize on someone who is dot, dot, dot. But that's the wrong understanding of a capitalistic society. It is your hard work should have a value that compensates you at whatever level, whatever rate it can it can produce. So I don't, so you don't, so you don't say all of us just need to be, uh, we need to all have the same thing. No, you say that all of us should be given our right to hit the highest level of climax on the gifts and the talents that we have and let them produce at that same level. And that then gives you a certain sense of hard work and creativity. And let me try it again. Like you got some guys who, and most of them are primarily white from Silicon Valley and other places that, you know, they were sitting on their couches eating Cheetos and, you know, playing video games and, and their mothers and fathers say, Hey man, you could be a coder. So they told, they told them how to code and, and the code turned into this and it turned into that. But these guys, it's, it's no different than the black guy who's sitting on his couch eating Cheetos playing Madden. No different except someone didn't say you can apply that skill to the code. So it's the same. Okay. That's the beat. Tell him I got to stop. It's the same code. It's just people's mind has have to be, you know, given the opportunity to grow in the right space. But this is such a racist and a biased study. I, I, I'm glad that they're showing it, but they oh, should be showing it. Bishop, do not call it study. We sh we're not here to disrespect studies. This is not study. This is, I'm telling you, but they're they've got it coming for them. Next, on this yeah. one. Next. Religion. Religion. Ah, I knew it was coming. Religion. Religion. When, Christian, when Christianity is the norm, you must only be white. When anything other than Judeo-Christian tradition is foreign to you, you must be a white person and no other type of person, no other skin color person. And when you have no tolerance for the deviation from the single God concept, it makes you a white supremacist. Oh. Bishop, based on this, are you sure that you're black? <laughs> I think sure I, that you're black? No, no, I was you know, me, at least, me at least I'm Muslim, so it's not the thing, you know, and uh, me I'm Muslim, so maybe I still qualify as a black. But you, Bishop, Bishop, yeah. Bishop, I'm, Bishop, yeah, Bishop you know Christian. that uh, what, you know, black, black, you know, paint, black face paint is illegal, Bishop. Take off the mask. Come on, you must be white. <laughs> Uh, yeah, underneath all of this, man, I'm a white man trying to get out. But look, that I is so interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I guess so. But, you know, um, I, I think that uh, 
that a a non tolerance in religious ideology is one of the first forms of 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 a person who is whose constitution is very fragile who whose makeup is very weak because if anything i want you to hear this your god should be able to handle my questions see your religious understanding, your religious belief should be able to handle my skepticism. It shouldn't make me or you feel so uncomfortable that we have to, you know, tear it down. See, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the first ways, you know, a person does not have a real spiritual makeup is when my concept of God has to destroy yours in order for mine to stay real. See, it has to be on me in order for mine to stay real. And you should be comparing the notes of your life, not comparing the the uh, arguments of your of your faith, and, and and that's very difficult to do when you are living in a in a society that says domination, domination. That is a um, that that's a that's a very you know you got to be very careful. When, when you are saying my job, this, this is what Jesus said. This, this is what Jesus I know said. He says, let the wheat and the tare grow together and I'll do the separating. Meaning there are two, you know, cause wheat and tare look the same in the field. So you can't, you know, he's righteous and he is not. He said that. He said other sheep that I, other sheep that I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And there's going to be one fold and one shepherd. He said when a one of his zealots said, "Hey Jesus, these guys are not following us. They're walking." He said they're not following us, so you should send down fire from heaven and kill them because they're not with us. Jesus said, "If they are not against us, they are with us, and you don't know what spirit you are." See, so when you really understand how it it should look. That's why I always call it the kingdom. You have, you're not trying to intimidate individuals to believe what you believe. And you're not trying to slaughter them into submission. You are saying the reason you have God and a free society is so that every possibility can exist. And when you choose the possibility that is truth, it makes you free to choose again. And when you choose a possibility that is not true, it binds you. So you get bound, bound, bound. And then what we say is Christ makes you free, free, free. So that's the difference. But that ain't white. That's Omar. Omar. <laughs> Omar, Omar, but fake black. Omar, but fake black. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine, okay. Fine. Is this like I, can, I can't win. <laughs> Next, um, sta on status, power, and authority, their, their vision, the vision of a white supremacist of status, power, and authority. So when you equate wealth uh, to worth, you must be a um, white supremacist. Because you know, Bishop, I mean, I am sure that you don't know any black person or any Latino or any, you don't know any non-white person who for some reason doesn't have this rigid idea that wealth equals, equals uh, worth, right? I mean, to me, the people who believe, I believe that there are people who think wealth equals worth, but to me, those are just unenlightened people. Those are just people who don't know any better and they, they equate those two. But to me, it doesn't have to do with your skin color. I know, I surely know a lot of black people, starting with my own, the black people in my own country and here in America, I know tons of black people who for them, Wealth equals worth. Like how much money you have determines how worthy you are or not. I, I know plenty of black people like that. I don't know, Bishop, but maybe you don't know. Or maybe, you, uh, do I know fake black people maybe? <laughs> no, I just think you know a lot of uh, young black people. <laughs> no, <Nah>. but <laughs> <laughs> young black folks, they say it's about their paper, dog. But, you know, um, that's, that's no, no, wait, wait, more, more, more before you answer on the same status. Your job is who you are. If you believe something like that, you must be, you must be a white person and not white. no other skin color. 
But if you respect I, authority, if you respect authority, you must be a white person and nothing else. If you're heavy, if you have a heavy, we put a heavy value on ownership of goods, space, and property. Right. In other, in in other words, if you believe in property rights, meaning what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours, don't take people, don't take people's stuff. If you believe that, you're a white supremacist. And black people don't do that. Black people take each other's stuff. Black people, you know, don't respect authority. They're just running around being crazies. Um, black, yeah. I mean, right, Bishop? No. <laughs> you know, I, I really, again, I, I ain't going to call it a study. Bishop, I am so tired by now. I've been so upset. You have no idea. I am exhausted. I mean, I, 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 I would, if I was reading it like you, I would be upset too. I'm glad I got some hip hop to get me out of this. But look, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I think that there are so many of us who, and I want you to catch this because because I'm going to show you something in the middle of this. When you don't have and you chronically don't have, you begin to find value in what's, um, what's established in relationship more than what's established in pocket and in prizes. So there can be this mistaken, this, this mistaken idea that not to have is to be black, but there has to be commentary for those who have worked hard and still don't have. So they got to find the hope to keep going. So some people on the outside can look at that and say, black folk don't even value not having, no, we just ain't got it. We value it. We just have to, like, we've learned how to adjust. See, did, did you ever watch that show, Good Times? You ain't never watched Good Times, did you? You should watch I don't that. watch TV. I don't watch TV, but I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Why? Why you stop watching TV? Because, because I'm a white supremacist, probably. Only black people watch TV, and I don't. Haven't you gotten it by now? Uh, you got you to catch the drip TV. You don't watch TV? <laughs> All right, look. So don't hold it again. <laughs> All uh, right, but, 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 okay, there's a show called Good Time. Now, if you're doing black show, you might want to look that up. And okay, Good Time was the, was, the, uh, was the Evans family, and they were in the ghetto in Chicago, and they were, it was all these principles about life, but they never could make it out the ghetto because uh, it was always something that kept them, kept them in. And so what they were trying to do was write in a way that said getting out of the ghetto was always the goal, but having a good day was it more important than having a get out strategy. So it was almost like you was living in these parallel worlds where you was like, did he get the job? And, and, no, he didn't get it. Did, did, uh, did they make it? No, he broke his leg. Did, did, you know, it was all, you, 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 <laughs> it's like, come on now, they got to get out of here. But they were, they were still trying to show you how you can have in, intimate, complicated relationships because things are not what values you, what makes you valuable. It's the relationship, it's the individual, it's all of that other stuff. It'd been nice they got it together. At the end, they did get out. I'm gonna go on and give you a spoiler alert. At the end, they, they made it out. Keith got a football contract. Anyway, point I'm making is that when, you, when, you, when a person take, take a drive-by analysis of the community, and they can see people still being happy. Like when the stock market dropped, you know, you see a whole bunch of black folk telling me they're gonna jump off a bill, and they was like, okay, hopefully they get whatever they had, because it already dropped in my eyes long, time, you know. So it's almost like you adjust to it. And so people think that adjustment means you don't have a desire for it. It's not true. You just have said, I understand how to live without that being my primary motivator. And so I'm trying to get these I'm trying to get these racist people some type of uh, uh, understanding. But bottom line is, there are those who understand. See, there are those who understand the value of money and value of things, and they have taught that we we have uh, we 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 don't have enough uh, connectivity in those areas to where we have our push. Meaning, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. The dollar does not circulate. Yeah circulate enough in African-American communities and there's, you know, yep. blah, blah, blah. All those things are true too. So, so though there are some truths in these lies, see, I'm going to show you what wickedness, wickedness is. Wickedness is not just a lie. It's truth with a twist, see? So they can take a truth and, they, and you, start, you start carrying ideas 
that are not really accurate. So these ideas are not accurate, even though I do see how a person could think that there is no value. And, and see, I'm going to show you something else. Like uh, uh, Kanye West had a song. Uh, uh, and, and the song was, in uh, the song he basically says, uh, it's, it, the song is called Click. You need to listen to the song. Ain't nobody messing with my click, click, click. Click, it's a good song. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in the song, man, yeah, he says, I'm supposed to go buy a business. But wait, let me finish. He said, I'm going to get some gold and all that. He said, Spike Lee going to be mad at me. Hold on, let me finish. Because he said, I know, in, 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 one, in the song, he was like, man, I know some of the stuff I shouldn't do, but I desire to have some affirmation, even though I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out of that I'm trying to get 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 through that 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 portal, um, and so that's what happens, man. Sometimes we try to get through that portal, so it seems like we just value play. So if, if someone say like like Jay Z said it in the song OJ, the story of OJ, you know, he said uh, he should have uh, he could have bought this for this, and it would have been worth a million. He said, "How I feel, Dumbo," you know, because what he did bought all them cars and all that. That's just part of. It was a friend of mine who was wealthy guy, black guy. He said, "Man, let me just tell you something. When you get money, you need to get enough money to where you gonna have to make up for all the times you didn't have money." So understand you're going to do that. He said, so just understand that's going to help. You're going to buy stuff you don't need. You're going to do stuff. You, you're going to do all of that because that's part of what you do. But then you have to get to that next level. See, a lot of people who've been, who have generational wealth, they've already been through all that. Now they coming in establishing legacies and this. And, and, and so you can misunderstand. Again, that's why I said you can't let the outcome and not the input of the data not match. You can't just look at the outcome. But anyway, I said a whole lot. I'm trying to. Except we people have no data. So this takes me to the next one. You remember when you were talking about the future, like you believe that you can do? So <clears throat> this is the white supremacist view on uh, future orientation. Only white people plan for the future. Only white people have enough discipline to go for delayed gratification. Only white people believe that progress is always best. And only white people believe that tomorrow will be better. So us black people do not plan for the future. We are delayed gratification. What the heck is that? Progress or is that? Oh, no, I, we, we prefer to live in backwardness. Sorry. And tomorrow will be better. No, 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 no. What do you mean tomorrow will be better? I don't believe I'm going to be alive in the next minute. What in the actual F? No. I say that because I'm talking to a bishop, so I am so sorry. But I, I'm not talking the way I, I, I would talk. I would not use the words I've been using the past two days. But Bishop Omar, I mean... This is at a museum. The Smithsonian's, you know, National Museum. Yeah. Of African and American history is yeah. basically saying that they agree with such nonsense. I don't even know why. If you're gonna talk about people, some people in this manner, if you're gonna say that there is a group of people who simply don't plan for the future, have no discipline around delayed gratification, uh, don't believe in progress but backwardness, and uh, don't believe in tomorrow, I, I mean, you, and then you're gonna put in the same sentence that this is a museum for African, for, with history and culture. Why don't you just call us animals? It would be faster. And we have, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. You know, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's disheartening that somebody would even think that hard even put that together. But, man, I, I'm going to tell you that there are only a few folk in my life that I'm always worried about them not worrying about, uh, not worrying, but not, not living as if tomorrow is real. And those are 
children mainly, my children and, and other young yeah. people who live for the day. Those are folks who have certain addictions that cause them to say, you know, I'm not worried about what the effect is. I'm just looking for the for the high. And then th those are the ones who I deal with that say, um, I may not make it anyway. So, you know, I'm in this survival mode. But that's a, that's a small fraction of our diaspora. Most folks are in the place where they are, like I, I normally do this bar, I, I do this bar graph, right? And on the bar graph, it's like negative all the way, you know, negative to negative 10 and positive. And I say that most people are at about negative two. And, and then we, we pull them to zero. At zero, you can actively understand your choices. And there are sometimes, now watch this, man. When you're at zero, right, when I pull you to zero, at zero, you are actively, you can see the playing field. But normally, there are some things that blow you back and forth. You know, you get blown back by some tragedy that you didn't think about or some some impediment or something happens so it blows you back or, or just a good old drunk night. You know about those, right? <laughs> some of those uh, 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 bring you back just a little bit. And then you get back to zero. And then it's some positive stuff for you do something charitable or you find your way to, you know, you do something out of, the, out of your heart or you find the love of your life. And so you go, so you kind of vacillate. And so the goal is to get you, get you going across that way so much that you enjoy what it takes and the discipline that it takes to get there. That's what most people are. Uh, but there's, there's this idea that if we focus on the ones who are negative four, negative five, that way, we can define a whole culture by those small groups. Uh, like I said, my friend told me 90% of a group fall on a 2% lead. That's so true. 90% of the people are what I just described. That 2% yep. are the ones who don't care. And they normally don't care because caring for what? Now all that other stuff that comes into that. But oh, that is not a good depiction but that, but, but but that but that get, that should give us food for thought to say there is work to be done on our own ideas beyond what others perceptions are absolutely um a few more time to follow rigid time schedules is white supremacy on that one bishop i feel a little bit singled out because <laughs> I, you, between you and me, you're always late. But when I'm not with you, I am always late. And I have some friends, you know, you know in Africa, we always, we always laugh because we're just like, oh, well, you know, when you give a time to somebody, they're like, is it going to be African time or, or uh, European time? Okay, here, I have to agree, maybe it's true, it's things, but it still doesn't make it okay to not respect time, right? So let's just, <laughs> I would not want that to define us. So this one, this one hurt a little bit, you know, because it is kind of true. And um, uh, I found that it seems like it's uh, more white people follow rigid time rules than time schedules than we do, but, but I also know plenty of black people who definitely are sticklers, you know, ticklers for time, for time schedule. Like if you go in Rwanda, a lot of the people in Rwanda are ticklers about time, way more than the French are, way more than the Italians are. The Rwandans are just this much about time. So, you know, uh, and for, they're one. also saying, that, <laughs> and they're also saying that um, to view time as a commodity is basically to be white. Uh, so, Again, I think we just must be these animals who have no concept of time, it doesn't matter, whatever. But um, I think that one is pretty, pretty on its own. Next, aesthetics. Oh, Bishop, this one I won't say, I won't make a comment. You, 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 all the comments are for you. Aesthetics, the aesthetics of a white supremacist. It is based on European culture. It's, uh, a play, it's a, when steak and potatoes is the norm, bland is best. <laughs> women's, beauty is, <laughs> women's beauty is based on blonde, thin, the Barbie concept. And then uh, man's attractiveness is based on economic status, power, and intellect. So oh. that's, that's, all of that is white supremacist. It's whiteness. Oh. I will shut my mouth because I've, I'm afraid what might come out of it might not be. <laughs> well, uh wow 
You know, I, I guess the only thing you can say on that is beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that each one of us has our own, uh, our own taste buds, our own likes. Uh, I wrote a song and it was a love song. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? I do. Okay. I do. It says, I know you're a beautiful singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sing. I'm, I'm just going to tell you the word. Oh, come it says, on. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. Come on, I, Bishop. I don't know. And, and I wrote Bishop. it. I wrote it. Okay, I, I'll sing it. I wrote it when I met Anita. Okay. When I met Anita. I said, Have you ever girl. been in love with a girl you got a crush on? Never want to stop. Matter of fact, you put your rush on. When you see her, you smile. Forget all pain. Inspired to set up your kingdom and reign. The kind of girl you read about in the Holy Script. Her love is like a river and you want to take a dip. A manual for perfection is no prototype. When God made this girl, the angel said, all right. Mm, it's you I saw when I was dreaming. You're my angel. I told all of my friends, angels don't have wings. By the look in my eyes, they knew what I'd seen. Cocoa brown skin, hair shoulder length. Respectful but aggressive, kept me at arm's length. See, so that's that was my. I didn't uh, say I didn't say Barbie blonde steak potatoes bland. <laughs> no, I know, but I know. So, but are you are you saying that you're confirming them? But the people who like those other things. Only be white people, because no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that sometimes we don't know that it's so individualized, like fingerprints, that there's no homogenized way that we can look at. It. It's easy to say, exactly. like, fuck, but see, now, now that song is copyright. Just anyone, just the only podcast you try to steal it. I'm, I'm sue you, but uh, <laughs> but oh, <laughs> Bishop, stop right there, stop right there. See when I tell you that you're a fake black, according to these people. You're always talking about this is mine. If you try to stake it, I'm going to sue you. Bishop, you are a rabid individual who believes that worth, worth, worth. Bishop, you are so, so white. I'm you're a white guy. I'm a white guy. White guy. White guy. White guy. <laughs> Remember what, what Biden said? You, you ain't black? You ain't black, Bishop. <laughs> you ain't being both for Biden. I got it. But, you believe in capitalism too much? I do. <laughs> I do believe. I'm a believer. <laughs> I am a believer. I don't, yeah, I believe. But yeah, oh but it, it is, um, I, I think that folks really forget how, how much it, for me, how much um, God gives us unique taste and unique, you know, framing. Um, so, so I love it. The expression uh, that, that we have with each other from a beauty side, from a, from, from what, that's why I love urban culture too, because it is so vast and it's so, you know, it, it has so many shades and so many ideas that creates this kind of adventure just inside the culture, just inside the one or two or three or 20 or 50 that you mentioned or that you meet or that you come in contact with. It just brings your world more pluralistic and it's not this, kind of this is it and so i don't know if that's white or black but i know if that is the concept of beauty it's wrong that's what i know Absolutely. and I, i'm not talking about blonde hair blue eyes. i'm saying so static and so you know we we don't need no flavor that's why I like church and worship and this see, if you come to my church we get, we go we getting it in you know we got music and we you know we you know, we love it because I tell people you got to have an enhanced worship experience because to believe in what you cannot see, you have to go where you cannot go physically. You got to go there spiritually. You need to turn on a certain level. And so we turn that level on. And some people just say it's so endorphins. They just say, oh, it's just emotional, whatever. Whatever it is, it feels better than having to be, you know, s solemn and kind of giving in to this idea that it's all reason no spirit. It's no flavor. No special effects. My get has special effects. Ask Michael. Special effects. <laughs> I'm talking of which, he must not be a black, he must not be a white person. He ain't a white guy. <laughs> really, really, he didn't go for a blonde Barbie type. Yeah, right, Michael, what you doing, man? 
Michael is missing <laughs> a period <laughs> time. <laughs> My boy, Mike. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the next one on the holidays, we're not gonna we're not gonna spend too much time on that because it goes back to it goes. If of course, if you believe what they believe uh, on the history part, you yeah. will see why they put holidays. They're saying that on holidays, the holidays, uh, what it's based on Christian religions and white supremacy bases their holidays on white history and male mm -hmm. leaders. So mm -hmm. as you can see, it goes back to what they believe on the history side. It makes mm -hmm. sense with this. So justice. Just and they, they say that whiteness is to have your justice based on English common law, that whiteness is to have your justice believing in protecting property and entitlements, mm -hmm. that whiteness uh, is where justice um, believes that intent counts. Mm. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Bishop, Bishop, I don't uh, know, but for me, at least, uh, at least for... Two or two or three of these, it makes me a non. It makes me a white supremacist because I totally believe in, prop, in, in protecting property rights and um, you know what what people own is their, what's yours is yours, and I definitely believe that intent does matter. You know, if you come to kill me, even if you didn't succeed at it, uh, you still came to kill me, right? Um, <laughs> So that must make me a, a white supremacist. I don't know. Uh, right. This idea of base, uh, but where the justice based on English common law. Well, you know, if I don't want to, I don't know. Just, anyway. You know, I, I think. In America. I, to their defense, they said it's in America, but the justice is yeah, yeah. in English. Yeah, English common law. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we can say that based on the historical context of the, the law. Um, systems and the and the parameters of the, of the laws that we follow, and it is it, it is based on that. But that's not as um, white as they may think, because you know most of the laws that were originated, in my opinion, they come from more um, African tradition and those. Um, um, and even Asian, it's, I don't get all that. I don't get the key word. Oh. The key word in this bishop is common, you know, like the law of the commons to me, because we all human beings, there is something that we all share universally. Right. And in this, case, I would call it the commons almost. So right. whether you want to call it English or whatever, there is, we all kind of share more or less some of the same basics when it comes to, right. you know, it's, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's it's conscious and to me it's God conscious. It's the spirit of God that is not disconnected totally from man that reminds us, you know, because you don't you don't have to, you know, think about a child who does not understand language, you don't don't understand parameters, and you find them guilty of something and they're trying to hide it. You can tell that there's something inside of them that is saying this was wrong. And so so there's a deeper there's a deeper idea in that to me. But but again, it that speaks so, so, so off on so many people that I know who do wrong. They know they're wrong. They're they're more ashamed that they don't have the power to to in their minds yet to to overcome those things that cause them those triggers. Uh, but that is, and, and it's so messed up in this cognitive distortions and all kinds of other stuff. But people in their mind are not just operating in this sense of um, brilliant, you know, I'm a brilliant wrongdoer. That's not how people really are. They, um, especially in urban culture, urban culture is so full of the, the idea of living, trying to live in code but trying to live from a code of survival and a code of, of, um, of, of, of almost, of almost rules for this and not rules for that. And then rules for this and not rules for that. So it's all of these multiple layers of codes that you're trying to manage in your brain. So it, it, it gets this complicated idea of what's right and wrong. And then it makes right and wrong seem mushy. And that's why you don't mushy. have, yeah, and that's why you don't have these. Um, yeah, let me be quiet. Go ahead. <laughs> well, this is the last one on the idea of competition. To want to be number one is to display a sign of um, 
white what? supremacy. What because you know, you and I don't know any black people who want to be number one. Um, and definitely don't, definitely don't say my name. Uh, <laughs> people, um, when you want to win at all costs, only, it's only white people who want to win at all costs. Not what I'm saying, but wanting to win at all costs is a good thing. But I'm saying uh, I know plenty of non-whites who want to win at all costs, however not nice that is. Um, this idea of winner-loser dichotomy, like basically white people are the only one who believe that life pretty much is a zero-sum game. Like, that is true. I, I've never seen any black person or any, you know, Hispanic people who believe the same thing. It's only white people who really have this issue, this dichotomy. Um, action orientation. Only white people are action oriented. Oh, no, that explains everything. Why? Um, they say that Afri black people, especially in Africa, are sitting underneath trees all day long. They're not doing jack. <laughs> because there's only white people who do things. And then uh, this idea of master and control nature is so white. Only white people are like that. Everybody else is so perfect. Um, white people believe, are the only one who believe that they must always do something about a situation. I guess it goes back to, you know, that's why I see white people doing things everywhere and black people are sitting underneath a tree. They think we're sitting underneath a tree, we do nothing all day long. Because, you know, we don't believe in doing something about a situation. We sit and wait for something to happen. Bishop, isn't that what you do all day long and what I do all day long? We just sit and wait and I'm a baby mama, you're a baby daddy, and that's it. That's all we do all day long. I guess that's, oh no, wait, wait, that's some action. That's a lot of action. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't say anything. Um, aggressiveness and extroversion. White people are the ones who, are the only ones who aggress and extra, and ex, you know, take from people. Um, they believe this idea of believing in decision making. I'm going to make a decision. Only white people make decisions. The rest of us were like passive losers. Um, majority rules, of course, only when white people are in power. That's white supremacy right there. Um, last time I checked in my own country, you know, the majority is actually what rules, you know, we're 95%, um, you know, Sufi Muslims. And uh, well, a lot of the things is designed for us. Of course, we, we make sure that, you know, there are also Catholic holidays and everything, but you know, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's rare for me to walk in a place where all the rules are made, the major rule is made for a few, a tiny percentage of a population we try to come to, I don't know. I'm not saying that minorities should be disregarded ever at all. We try to, we need to try and be as inclusive as possible. But having an issue where you think majority rule, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know. So Bishop, I don't know for you, but me, I am just really wondering who is behind this? Who in their right mind thought that it was okay to have such a poster standing for something like this? I kid you not. If you did not tell me that it was from the Smithsonian's, you know, National Museum of African, you know, history and culture, I sincerely, if I didn't see who signed this, who was behind this, I would have thought it was a group like the KKK or some Aryan, you know, nation type organization. I would sincerely believe that. And you know, the other thing that really bothers me about this bishop, why I'm not taking it lightly, you know, you and I, we laughed a lot about this. I have not been laughing for two days. I've been very pissed off because I tell you why. It's because you see what they put here and the nonsense of it, like the, the outrageous nonsense, nonsensical um, aspect of it. However crazy and outrageous all of this is, do you know why it bothers me? It would bother me if I thought, if I knew it was the thought of French people. This is not the thought of French people. This is the thought of a sizable group of people in America, some of them white, some of them black, who basically do what you said. They take what maybe 2% of some of the black community might look like the, res the outcome that's existing today. And they turn it around to make it that this should be our culture. But instead of challenging me on some of the things that are here, they're saying, no, to be not racist is to accept that your outcome is actually who you are. And you remember when we were talking about it yesterday, the other day, when we were saying, they, they made us believe that we are less than, that we can only be less than. Well, this type of stuff is part of it. This type of stuff is part of what makes, can you imagine 
This is supposed to describe the millions of black people around the world. They claim it's America, but it's not true. It's what they think black people should be. This is who we should be. This is what we are. And they're contributing to this stereotype that is attached to the black skin. That, you know, tomorrow when the cop is stopping somebody, he's thinking right away, oh, no way, that's true. The data says um, black people have more propensity to be, um, to be violent. Well, didn't they say somewhere here that uh, we don't believe, um, you know, like uh, it is only white people uh, believe in authority and only people, white people don't take stuff from, away from others. So you see how all of this starts to happen. So to me, this is racist on so many levels. But number one is it is contributing to, because no normal person looking at this would think that it's okay. Uh, they're contributing to the stereotypes attached to the black skin. But most importantly also, they are keeping and making our young people, our, all the people in us who don't have strong self-esteem, believe in this crap. And when you believe in this crap, where do you go from here? Where do you go when you believe that there is, you don't believe in tomorrow? Where do you, where do you, what, what happens to you when you don't believe in progress? What's your deal when you don't believe in, um, in property rights, in the fact that what, what is my guts is my guts, and it's not right for Bishop to come and take it away from her? What's, what's the future for such a, a population? What is it? So to me, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, who the hell is behind this? Because it, I'm, this, is, this feels almost like sabotage. This is sabotage. And this is active racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think that... Um, that, that's that, you, what you just said is uh, very powerful. It's not just uh, what has been said. It's the intent. And I believe the intent is to make sure that there's a, um, a real less than and deflated worldview. But, but the other part of it is this. I, I'm going to tell you something no matter how many folks describe a people, when a people starts describing themselves as such, that's when it gets dangerous. Because- And that's why, people, Bishop, I wanna know, go ahead, Bishop, sorry. No, no, I, I, that, that was the point, that, that that's what scares me more than anything, is that some of these things, we like I said, we laugh and we nod, but some of these things are true, that we have, we, and I'm not saying they're truth. I'm saying that they have some facts that that have become attached to our identity. And if exactly. we don't, if we don't fight through those facts, we will we will become subject to these truths to the point that you can't shake it off. Or you would only see. And that's what cripples the American idea is that you have to be exceptional, exceptional, exceptional just to be accepted rather than just being born. But, but in a way we have, we have to fight these kinds of uh, idiotic uh, phrases and ideas and, 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 you know, boxes so that we don't really succumb to the same ideas that we say we hate. Yes. Exactly, Bishop. And then, you know, because to me, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, Somebody, somebody somewhere must have thought that it is okay to have put out such a piece of garbage. Someone okay. somewhere thought it was okay. And I bet you that they supposedly consulted with some black people. I want to know who those black people are. And actually, I'm not so surprised as to who they could be. I wouldn't be surprised that maybe even Kendi is maybe among the people that they call. Remember Kendi? You know, Kendi, I could see him totally agreeing with all of this crap as a black person. And maybe a white person, we know that probably they agree with a white person called Robin D'Angelo, white fragility. This is a garbage she believes in. Really, truly racist garbage in the name of anti-racism, by the way. This is really bad. And us black people need to wake the hell up because seriously, if we don't, I'm very worried about this. We are so right now, you know, consumed with our, you know, rage and content at what's happening, you know, like um, all the stuff with Black Lives Matter, right? We're so, the, there's this anger in the black community. But right. I say, we need to be very careful and not throw the baby out of the bathwater because when we start agreeing and telling a group of people it's okay to put up garbage like this, we are hurting no one else but ourselves. 
No one else but ourselves. Because a lot of the things I hear of this, I, I so hear to be whiteness. My God, if that's what to be whiteness is, number one, I am white because I totally live my life by a lot of these principles. And I think there's nothing wrong with this, some of these principles. Of course, I don't believe that uh, a person's worth is based on his wealth. So minus, plus or minus a few things like that. I proudly, proudly, proudly live my life according to some of the principles that they're decrying over here and saying that it's whiteness. If that is what it is to be white, count me as a white person, proudly, proudly. So we black people need to start to be careful and to really start to understand what is in our benefit and what is not. And to, and to, and to, to agree with language like this is our demise. And so when we were saying they make us believe, this is where actually the, and the slavery is. It's right here in this head of ours. When you support something like this, that's where we're going. So I'm not going to stop right here. Black Lives Matter said, you know, when George Floyd happened, we're all there and we said the officer is something needs to happen, justice, blah, blah, blah. We want to bring the people to justice who did this and blah, blah, blah. I am shocked, shocked. Yes, there was an uproar on this. And there's so much that they kind of took it down, but they still have some elements of it up there. But I'm not happy with that. I want to know who is behind this. And I want to make sure that they are fired or that they resign. Because this is active racism. This is KKK stuff. This is, this is, this is, this is um, Aryan nation stuff. They couldn't say it more, better with a straight face. So I think we have to wake up and we have to do something. So Bishop, I'm announcing to you that I'm going to launch a petition. Oh. It's going to say, wanted for racism. Because oh. you're promoting stereotypes about black people that do not serve us. And most importantly, and most dangerously, you are condemning countless black people, especially our young ones, our upcoming ones, to believe that, hey, it's good. If being black is to be a thug. I'm sorry, so I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and to do what I'm supposed to do. Bishop, I mean, you have to help me here because I am really having a hard time. No, with no, this. no, no. I, 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 are, think, I think I want the way. Yeah, I want. I want to help you in this way. I, I support the petition, uh, but I also want to help you in this way that that outrage and that anger is the direct result of your belief in black people. So keep <laughs> believing with that same kind of fire and, and let's go. Because, uh, what, because what are they saying about you and me, Bishop? What about saying about the millions of black people in this country who are and then you're gonna be late. They're saying that we they're need working to hard, late. they're raising great hmm? they're raising great families. You are doing what you're doing. All of us we're out there working every day just to be ourselves and you're trying to tell us that to be who we are as accomplished black people who are working hard and even if we're not accomplished we still live our lives in a dignified manner um with you know with a respect for you know the rules and respect for fellow human beings and this idea you're telling us i mean what the, what an yeah this should not go down so easy this should not go down so easy and it makes me scared that when a George Floyd happens, we can mobilize the way we do, but this, where is the mobilization? Where? And I don't care how many black people are behind this or how many white people are behind this or Asians or nothing. I don't care. I could care less what skin color you are. I could care less who is behind this. Whoever is behind this is wrong. And it deserves consequences. I say, I agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. You've been watching Kesky Drip TV. Spark brought to you by the lip balm that tears the little... Stop, stop, stop. You, you don't even know how to do this. Okay. Let me do it. <laughs> All right. Oh, you were know, fired up today. I love it. I, Go ahead. Actually, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad that um, we're ending the week with um, me talking to you about this because I... Yeah, you can. I don't know if people can see it watching this, but I am. I'm totally in evolution. I, I feel like the, the feel temperature it. has. I'm just so. It. I'm just because we're working so hard to change things and this nonsense right. uh, validated right. by, by a respectable institution like right. the Smithsonian's. Yeah. Right. So oh. anyway, but yeah. but but we, you helped me, Bishop. 
um, I'm going to work on this uh, unless I wake up tomorrow and God has told me, Magat, forget your petition or whatever. I think I'm going for it, but we'll, we'll see. What no, no, he's, he's going to tell you to keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you with it, though. I'm going I'm to help you with this. So I understand where you're at, but go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, just one more thing about that, Bishop. You see, this is another reason why I think it was important for us to call our podcast Black Culture Matters. Mm -hmm. Because you see, what we talked about here is all about culture. Mm -hmm. But your culture and the set of beliefs that one has determines the actions and the type of society that one builds and then one lives by. So when we say that culture does matter, it is, it is so important that the culture is right and healthy and positive so that the human beings living in it, you know, can thrive. So this is why we say black culture matters. I don't, we're not doing this just because we want to be knee jerk or whatever. I don't, I could care less about that, but this is reality. And this is just proving our point because this piece of garbage goes against our culture. Got Bishop, it. you good? I feel good. Gonna I'm fired up. So are you still going to be are you still going to be here next week? <laughs> or are you just I'm like, just stay here, Maddie? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. I'm with, I'm with Maggie. And you are right, by the all way. All right. I love it. I love it. Cool. I love it. Well, thank you so much. I know you have a, we both have to go, but you guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, again here with the, um, on our Black Culture Matters podcast, which is brought to you by Catch Free Drip with Magat and Bishop Omar. Uh, it is a video show that we host together where we invite uh, the top cultural icons of our times and we, you know, they get to share and inspire our young Black listeners you know, to become the best versions of themselves. And uh, they do it by giving them instructions and sharing with them the knowledge that they have. Um, you can find us on all social media platforms with the handle at Catch the Drip TV. Bishop, with that, I will wish you a wonderful weekend. And uh, I love you. we shall be together next week. Why are you still laughing, yeah. Bishop? You know, Bishop, love you, this is not good. Because <laughs> you look like the always together guy and I'm the crazy, but you know what? <laughs> I love it. It's I just love it too. We good. I love you too. Uh, All right. Too. Have All a great right. weekend. You Bye. too. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bishop. Bye. Bye. Mm.